Hello Year 5, I hope you are all well. Before we start today's lesson, you're going to need to have to have two things with you. You will also, you will need yourself a pencil and some paper ready for your final task. But you will also need to have a copy of your witness statement that you wrote the questions and answers for to yesterday. You will also need a copy of the newspaper report that was sent out in the document to you. We are going to be looking at planning a police report today. So before I start, you need to make sure that you have the police report that I sent home to you in front of you because in a minute I'm going to ask you to sit and have a go at reading it. So just as a quick recap from yesterday, if any of you struggled with yesterday's task, this might help you a little bit more and this is also going to be useful information for your task you have to do at the end of today. So this is a list of potential witnesses that we could have to support and corroborate our story. So we have the man recorded eating his supper, there was an old lady sleeping in her chair, potential fishermen who were fishing at the pond, an astronomer looking into the night sky, obviously we know about the dog owner, a potential postman or milkman or someone doing a morning round, and a farmer working out in the fields. So those are some additional witnesses that we could potentially use to help corroborate our story. This will come in handy at the end of the lesson. What I would like you to do now is I would like you to pause the video and I would like you to go and read the police report statement that I have sent home to you. Once you have read that, keep it in front of you and then click play and we'll continue with the rest of the lesson. Okay, so you should have now had a go at reading through the police report. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to reread it, but I'm just going to indicate to you some certain areas that we need to focus on that's going to help us with our task today. So let's take the first paragraph. So we have our incident report. Now a police incident report always needs to make sure that the report has the name written of the detective who's investigating and the date of when this investigation took place. So here we have the file was reported by Detective Inspector Holly Hines and we know that the date of the incident was on Tuesday the 2nd of January. Now we have what we call an opening statement. So within our opening statement we need to explain the who, the what, the where and the when. We also need to include some additional details to help set the scene of our police report. So here we have the who, that there have been reports that have made. So the reports will have been made by the local citizens. The what is explained disturbances. Obviously, we need to know the where, and it happened in Hull Town. And we need to know when it happened. And it happened overnight on Tuesday, the 2nd of September. Now, there is additional information that has been added in there. But some of the main details that we need is what the incident is about. And the incident is the discovery of sheep's wool at various locations around the town. As we go through witness statements, we are aware that there will be various other information that will help support with the details of the story. But for now, we just need an opening paragraph that just summarises briefly what this report's going to be about. We then have our two witness statements. Okay, so we have James Nilbar and Esther Smith. We've given them different characteristics. We've got maybe a job title, where they live, what they might have been doing. But the main thing to incorporate into our interviews is the information from your witness statement. OK, so any of the answers they gave you to the questions that you interviewed them with. But more importantly, is this element called reported speech. Now, we're not going to worry about how to write reported speech today, as we will do that in a later lesson. But this is just a model example of how we report speech because you will be aware that when we see speech written in a piece of writing, we have various punctuations such as commas and quotation marks, and then sentences of speech. When we write reported speech, we are writing this from a second person's point of view. So this is someone retelling something that somebody else had said. You'll notice the use of pronouns of he and she. He reports, he said, he reported, she claims, she showed. These are all elements that support the witness statements. Now, the information that needs to be included is going to be information that that witness has been able to retell back to the police officer. So when we come to look at this in a minute, you're going to need to have your witness statements from yesterday ready to be able to support you with your task. 
Once we have our witness statements, we have our conclusion. So this conclusion comes from the point of view of the police officer, and it's a conclusion to summarise the events of what's happened and what their conclusions are as to what the next steps might be or anything that they may potentially have solved already. So we have additional information of 16 eyewitness accounts that are very similar to the ones to, the, to above. So this extra information helps corroborate, so make it more of a solid, believable story that this event happened and this event that, were, that took place was true. We also have various um, additional information that witnesses had interviewed seemed reliable. Okay, They relayed the same information, the same parts of the story. We also have a hint here that further investigations will need to take place. So we have concluded that witnesses have corroborated the same stories. The information seems reliable. This incident that has happened seems to be true. And there's various evidence and witness statements to support this. However, the next step is that there may need to be further investigation that takes place. So the decision that's been made here, the case is yet to still be solved. After the conclusion, we have the recommendations. So this is where the police officer sets out some steps of what needs to happen next. So in this particular one, four things needed to happen. Other people in the area that may have been affected will need to step forward and be interviewed. When we interview on scenes, for anyone that's watched any police programmes or cop shows or any films or movies about police officers, you tend to have a different team of people who come in and they examine things forensically. They might look for fingerprints on something. They might look for um, hair follicles. They might look for any items around the houses or the buildings on their crime scenes that they're looking at. So they will need to bring in a team of experts, okay, to have the area examined. They will also need to bring in specific experts for the animals. So they will need to bring in farm experts, so specifically sheep experts, to consult with them as to whether the idea of a flying sheep is a real thing. So not only have they got experts in to examine the scenes, but they have specific experts with relations to the sheep, which seems to be the sole focus of their investigation. Now, because this, the case has been unsolved, they may need to require more detectives to support within the town area, to support with any of those further witness statements if further witnesses come forward. So those recommendations just set out what the next steps are going to be in order to solve the case. Now obviously I still haven't shown you the last page of the book and I will not be showing you the last page of the book just yet because I don't want to spoil the end of the story. So your task for this lesson is you are going to have a go at writing your own report. So. What I have done here is I have summarised what needs to be included in your report. So this is almost like a mini toolkit. So we know to start off with, you're going to need the name and title of the reporting officer. So whether you are a detective inspector. We need the date of the incident report. Obviously, we know that it was on Tuesday. So you'll need to go back and have a look at what date it was. You then need to explain in your opening paragraph the who, the what, the when and the where. You will also need to include details at the scene. This only has to be a couple of sentences and you can use the model example that you have in front of you at home to support you with your own police report. Now you will need to write two eyewitness accounts. Now I know in yesterday's lessons I told you I only wanted you to write one as a minimum. Now that you've had a go at writing one witness statement and you have an idea of what it needs to look like, you now need to go back and pick another witness Go back through the book and have a look for other evidence and that you might be able to bullet point straight into your plan today. So have your other eyewitness account to handy, but then go back to the beginning of this PowerPoint and have a look at the list and see if there is another witness that you might be able to put together a statement for. I would not worry about the reported speech at the moment. OK, all the pronouns as such that will come into our following lesson when we come round to drafting our police report. But for now, you might want to corroborate and write down bullet points of what your witness saw. So this is where you would use your witness statement and you would bullet point the evidence of what that witness saw.
You then need to write your conclusion, so a summary of what you have found from your investigations and whether there needs to be any further examination. You then need to make some recommendations. So you might want to call in some experts. Now an expert who specifically researches amphibians like frogs, they are called herptology, okay, or herptologists. So you may want to require an expert to come in and survey the scene. It could be looking at the lily pads, it could be looking at any slime or water or marks that might have been left behind from the frogs. You may also need a forensic team to come and examine, it could be looking for frog DNA. You may need to interview other residents. Okay, there might be other witness statements that you might need that's going to corroborate your story. And you may also need potential officers to support in this as currently your case seems like it is still unsolved. Okay, so that's going to be your task. You are going to effectively draft your police report based on the statements that you wrote. Obviously, you will need to go back and create yourself another one. Had you done more than one witness statement yesterday, well done. You are already a slight step ahead. If you didn't, though, do not worry. It's not a problem. You will not need to have to write a whole load of questions and answers to support you today. But you can pick one of the witnesses of the list, go back through the book, and you'll be able to pinpoint the evidence you need and write it straight into your plan. Now, you only need to write your plan in bullet points bullet points year five not full sentences today is only a draft use the toolkit on the slide before the example report and your list of witnesses on the first slide to help you i will make sure that all of that information is included in the document that is sent home to you I have also sent home a copy of the book scanned for you. So you may need to go back and have a look at that and reread through the story. And it allows you to be able to examine the pictures a little bit closer to help you. Now, the one thing you need to remember, your report that you are doing is based on frogs, not flying sheep. Okay, so you need to remember that your police statement and your police report that you are drafting today is based on the book that we are looking at. This police report is just a similar example to support you. So please remember, frogs, not sheep. So, have a go at writing your draft report. There is a template for you to follow in your pack that has been sent home. Use the book to help you and use the additional resources I've sent home to you as well to support you with your draft writing tomorrow. You will need your draft writing for when we come round to having a look at writing our reported speech. And then next week, we're going to look at writing it up in full. Good luck, Year 5.